Now that we have experienced the range, the dynamic range of our movement from a shortening place to an expanded place, a lengthening place, we're going to look at how our body moves as a whole and not in parts. So I'm going to show you my skeleton. And I want you to take a look at the skeleton and notice that everything is connected. I want you to take a good look at the spine and our skull, that everything is being connected. Our head is connected to our neck and down to the spine. And it's connected to our pelvis. Our legs are connected to the pelvis. Our arms are connected to our torso. So now I'm going to ask you to make a little tiny model of the head, neck, and spine. So I'm going to ask you to hold your, whichever arm you want and make a baby fist. So to make a baby fist, you simply gently curl your fingertips towards the center of your palm and wrap your thumb around it. And see how nice and easy my wrist is. It's not bent in any way, just very nice and easy. So we're gonna explore the idea of how our body is connected and works as a whole. Um, we're gonna pretend that our, our um, fist, our baby fist is our head, our wrist is our neck, and the rest of the arm is our torso or the rest of our body. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to put a little pressure or tension on your wrist and see what happens. Okay, there we go. I'm exaggerating a little bit and noticing how it feels in your arm. I sense a little tightening in my shoulder, my armpit right here. I notice a little shortness of breath because I can't breathe very well and I can sense that my leg is being pulled in my body a little. And I also noticed that my baby fist rolled back and down in space just a little. Doesn't feel very nice. So I'm gonna ask my wrist to release into a neutral place again. So I was tightening and releasing. I'm going to do it again. And then I want you to notice what happened with my, my baby fist head. So I'm tightening my neck, my wrist. See how it's rolled back and down. And when I release that tension, <clears throat> it actually came forward and up. And notice, I'm gonna do it again. And notice that this tightening of my wrist actually affects my whole being. See how I'm shorter now? And when I release it, I came in my full length. And this is FM Alexander's big discovery, the dynamic relationship of our head, neck, and torso has a direct effect on our functioning and he means the quality of movement. I'm going to bring back my skeleton again to show you. This was our head that our fist was pretending to be. And this is our neck moving towards. And our whole spine. And I want you to pay attention this time and look at where the neck actually joins the head. Okay, I'm gonna try to open his jaw a little. I'm gonna move in so you can see more closely 
what it looks like, where it is. Our first vertebrae actually starts right here. This is very close to our ear. So let's see if we can find that top joint. It's called the AO joint, a lentil occipital joint. And sometimes in short, we just call it top joint. We're gonna have two index finger and you're gonna gently put it in your ear without blocking your hearing so you can still hear me. So imagine that there's a line drawing through your fingertips and noticing behind your nose, that's where your top joint is, okay? So if you breathe in and notice where the cold air actually brush in your nostril, right behind it, that's where your top joint is. That's where your neck and skull, your head meets. So let's do a little gentle nodding. And then say no, side to side. You can even look up. And I want you to really sense that, and you can look down, that the movement really happens at that top joint. And movement happens at jo joints. Okay, you don't have to keep the fingers in. You can simply now try to sense it in yourself. where that top joint is. Okay, you can look further and just allow your whole, notice how your body wants to follow your head a little bit. Okay, let's stand up now and so that we can really explore more movement, the flexibility of our spine and our whole body. So now we're in a standing position. I want you to take a moment and really sense yourself as a whole. You're connected from the top of your head all the way down to your feet on the floor. Your arms are connected to your body and your legs are nicely connected into your torso. And now just a tiny reminder of the fist activity we did just a little earlier that this dynamic relationship is what we're going after. And how we can move the top joint just like when we're releasing our wrist. So let's try a simple roll down and roll up and just to get a sense about the connectivity of our head, neck, and spine. Now we're going to gently nod yes from that top joint and really releasing and wishing for more space at that top joint so that your spine can lengthen like this slinky and have more space to move through the space when we do the roll down and roll up. One other tip that is helpful is to lead with your eyes. So here we go. We're going to release the neck and allow the head to come in balance and move just a little delicately away from your body. And then we're leading with our eyes into a really simple roll down. So our eyes are leading our head and then sensing the mobility of our spine as it rolled down in space. So we're moving slowly each vertebra by each vertebra all the way down. And if you feel that it helps to release your knees forward a little bit, please do so. And then slowly roll up. Remember, this is not a stretching exercise and it's not about how far down you can go. It's a simple exploration of the movement 
the connectivity, the connectedness of our head, neck, and spine, and how mobile we are as a whole. So if you feel like this actually this activity is too hard to do, or if you have any issue with bending over, feel free. You can do this. I'm giving you an option. You can do this on the floor with the yoga mat, and do the cat and cow yoga pose. And that's also a great way. Okay. So now after the roll up and roll down, I'm going to ask you to remember we did when we're sitting down, we did the gentle no. We're going to do that with our whole body now, keeping in mind that I'm going to look again, leading with my eyes, turning and noticing that spiral that wants to happen in my spine. Return to center. And then to my left. And then notice that if I wanted to go further, I really need to release my leg and turn my whole body in order to look all the way behind me. And that's return to the center. Let's do it one more time, okay? So we're gonna turn leading with our eyes. So your head always leads the movement. Leading with your eyes all the way back. And there is a moment that I, I need to allow my knees to soften and my legs to move in order to look all the way back behind me. Let's do another one, which is making a C shape. So we're going to bring our ear sort of towards my hip. And then really sensing your whole body move simultaneously as a whole. Okay. And these movements, you can be on the floor again on your knees and your hands and do a cat and cow pose. And that's a great way too. And you can do the C spine as well. And just noticing the shift of weight in both um, in your feet, right? But the reason I'm doing this standing up is, you know, this is a very easy way to free your whole body, your spine. If you get stiff, um, it's a great way to do it right before you practice and or in the middle of your practice or playing the instrument, if you feel stiff, then this is a really good reminder of finding that mobility in your body again, especially the rotation part is very helpful when you do feel that, you know, you're a little bit stuck, but this is the roll down and roll up sort of is a nice way to warm up your spine and to get sort of a um, body awareness going before you start playing your instrument. So this way you don't need a yoga mat. Um, you can simply, do, you can do a sit it down if you want, or you can do a standing. So that's why I'm showing you, um, this exploration standing up. Okay. So the, the rotation is very interesting because as you can see in the video, I'm not turning, like throwing my arms, but I'm really leading with my my, my head that it helps to lead with your eyes and then really allow your body to follow that. Really sensing that here we are with the idea of our whole body is being connected and there is a dynamic relationship in between our head movement and the effects on the rest of our body. So if you want to, we can go back to the turtle again and see if you also notice that in the turtle activity.